source with dry as a bone. Anything out there? Bone dry out here. It looks like a swimming pool from here. Oh. Oh. Not good. Not good. Bone dry. If you don't know if there's water, it makes you a little stressed. Say the least. When we started this walk across Grand Canyon, some 500 miles to the east of here, a friend told us we'd learn the difference between what we want and what we need. As Kevin and I marched into western Grand Canyon, it felt like we passed through a secret passageway into what some describe as the Godscape. A place very few visit. It's day 45 of walking. No precipitation in sight. Even though it's mid-February. And we are back in full desert. Did you step on that? Western Grand Canyon is incredibly remote and immense, and then some. And water is extremely scarce. That scarcity reminded us daily that the park and all the development projects surrounding its landscape share this major, often overlooked obstacle, limited water. Finding water when you're far from the river sometimes 3,000 feet above it, isn't easy. So we depended on very thin, very unpredictable potholes of rainwater. Let's see how deep it is. It's pretty nice. And we have two syringes with us this time. That's like a swimming pool. Just don't fall in there, because there's no bottom in that thing I, that I can see. Four, that's got four liters in it. They were the key to our survival. The water challenge is a day-by-day -day thing. Every morning, we start the search anew. Just constantly amazed by the liquid silence that seems to blanket us down here. Is there any water? No! You're right. You have a clean pair of underwear? <laughs> now, not the time right now to be chucking around. Did you hear that? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm good. I thought you fell. No. You just scared the hell out of me. <laughs> After hiking some 12 to 15 miles a day, for over a month, and some days hiking over 20 miles to reach water, let's just say it wore us down. What's up with your feet? They really hurt. My body's falling apart. I feel like I'm in a Swedish sauna. Nice. Our 58th day on the trail or whatever. It may have been the brushiest, scratchiest, longest day. Wow. At times, Kevin might have even become a tad grouchy. Sublime Obi Wan Kenobi style Jiu Jitsu wilderness hoo ha. I'm like, fuck that, fuck that. This just blows. Look where we've come from. Yeah, look where we've come from. Fucking nowhere. Our encounters with cactus didn't help. <laughs> I'll get him. I fell into a barrel cactus. And now I got all these weird lumps on my arm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's put the camera away.
Jeez. Woo. They hurt. Oh, God. Green Canyon bites sometimes, ah. literally. <laughs> Made my calf go numb. Ooh. I got you. I got you on a spot. I really don't like this. <laughs> Physical challenges aside. Careful. We discovered a solitude and stillness that we've experienced nowhere else. As we approached the end of the park and our walk, we discovered and heard a different Grand Canyon. A tourist boom has followed the success of the recent Skywalk development on the Wallapai Reservation on the southwest corner of the park. Over a decade ago, the FAA granted the approval to fly and land helicopters below the rim. What is now called Helicopter Alley, located on the border of the National Park, it is now one of the busiest heliports in the world. This wave of industrialized, high volume tourism come into the National Park. Uh, the acceleration of this kind of activity has been incredible. Economic enterprise of these tribal nations is important for them. You know, they basically starved for a hundred years, now they have something. The helicopters are a mess, you know. There's, there's just constant air traffic and uh, it affects the wildlife, you know. We're a hunting tribe. Propagate forward 15 years. Is there anything left here? Have we really done what we uh, set out to do, what Teddy Roosevelt set out to do, in, you know, letting mainly the rest of the world come fly over Grand Canyon National Park and, and you know, negate the laws that we created to protect these places? When we started this walk, we had no idea what we'd gotten into, nor how hard this undertaking would be. Our 60-day, over 650-mile hiking immersion was not about being on a list. It was about understanding a shared resource, the crown jewel of our national park system. While it was a journey to find a line, through one of the seven natural wonders of the world, between the river and the rim. It was also a quest to understand what might change or be lost in this rock cathedral if we don't find a balance between growing development pressures, resource extraction, and the sublime beauty that defines this iconic landscape and how we decide to use and experience our last wild places will dictate what the future of this place looks like. <laughs>